live from the Cactus Creek at Ibri. He is the king of prime time, Ghana's undisputed entertainment laureate, and still the youngest old man in Ghana. Put your hands together, show some love for the indefatigable K. KSM show. Thank you, folks. You know me. Once again, I have the audacity to come to somebody's house and then invite the person to be a guest on my show in this house. I'll be talking about the person very, very soon. But listen to this, folks. If you wanted to write a history of this country, a really good history of this country, modern Ghana, and write about the history of the politics, the history of the sports, the history of medicine, name it. You cannot do that without mentioning this man. We are talking about a true legend. I mean, there's everybody is called legend though. Even I am one from a legend, but no, no, no. We are talking about a legend, somebody I call a living symbol of legendary stature. Who am I talking about, folks? I am very, very humbled and very, very extremely pleased and honored to be in the presence of my guest, Dr. Nyaho, Nyaho Tamaklu. Doc, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one more, and then boom. Okay. So we are in the house, and um, we're taking a short commercial break. When we come back, trust me, we have so much to talk around, talk about. Stick around. We'll be right back. KSM show. Is it the luxurious rooms? Or the serene green surroundings? Is it the tempting swimming pool? the classy conference room or the cute gift shop maybe it's our chef's array of cooking delights whichever way it's all about cactus creek a most respected hotel. 0556039507 The KSM show We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. And, 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 and Doc, let, let, let me start from here. Very, 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 uh, this, you have become the symbol for, this is a hat or a cup or a, <laughs> <laughs> what do you call it? It's, it's a cup. It's a cup. <laughs> Everybody knows you by this cup. Uh, yeah. Well, how did it start? Well, I've been using it for quite a, a long time now, close to 50 years, I would mm -hmm. say. And I remember somebody who made uh, an interesting remark about that years mm. ago that he said, now if you are not careful, this cup will become your trademark. It is not. And uh, interestingly, I met the person even today. That's uh, Mrs. Dua. Noko wow. Mabu. Really? <laughs> and it has become your trademark? It has become. <laughs> and uh, uh, quite a lot of people get... Uh, at times, surprise. I remember President Kufo once asked me a question about it. About the cup. <laughs> he said, Now, this cap you have been wearing, do you, do you know people think there's something inside? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And I said, Kofi, do you think I wear it for nothing? They say, Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. There's something in the cap. Okay. <laughs> I remember very well. A lot of people have been talking about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, uh, some of them, you know, they want to what, know. What, how do you get so attached to it? 
Well, I mean, I think I got a, this, in fact, um, even when I was an ambassador, I was recently. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm so used mm -hmm. to it, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I've been wearing for years. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, that was just by the way. That's now, this is how I want to start, folks. Um, uh, this is my first time of sitting in front of this legend. But let me tell you what happened. Let me give you a little history. I was on a show on television one time, maybe a year ago or so. Mm. And the guest asked me something about coming Chroma, and you know me. When you talk about Nkrumah, then I become a chatterbox, you know. <laughs> so I spoke a lot about Kwame Nkrumah. And after I finished the show, the guest, the host of the show called me. He said, guess him. I got a call from Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklu. He was listening, and he wants you to call me. I'm the, he wants you to call him. I said, what? <laughs> Dr. Nyaho Nyaho wants me to call him? Mm -hmm. He said, yeah. I was so excited, dog. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I called him, and 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 the first thing you told me was you really liked my 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 what I said about Kwame Nkrumah. Yeah, Kwame. your program on Kwame. Yeah, you really liked it, mm -hmm. you know. And then I hung up the phone, and I was thinking, hmm, this is a little unusual, mm -hmm. because. I know you to be a founding father of the MPP. That's right. And I know the MPP mm -hmm. is the roots of, uh, comes from the roots of uh, the UP. Yeah, the UP tradition. And the UP tradition That's right. does not really look favorably towards Kwame Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. So when you called me and told me you liked what I said about Nkrumah, I said, whenever I get a chance to interview him, <laughs> that's the first <laughs> question I'll ask. <laughs> How does a UP man? Who, who is instrumental in founding mm -hmm. the modern UP mm -hmm. tradition, be an, mm -hmm. a, a fan of Nkrumah? Mm -hmm. It's interesting. You are not the first to ask this question. I was asked also in an interview by Mike Keegan. Oh, Mike Keegan asked you? He's still alive, you can ask him. Well, Mike Keegan, well, Mike Keegan said, you know, it's, it appears you have some sort of uh, contact through a discussion with you, with sort of socialist thinking. But your tradition is not, not. socialist. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, yes. I've always been admired, I very much admired Kwame Nkrumah. And my reason is quite simple. When Nkrumah came in, we were kids. We were kids. I was born in 42. Mm -hmm. And Nkrumah came in the 40s, so you can imagine. The well, one thing I remember very well was that whilst I was a small little boy, I think I was then in either class three or so, at Adbraka Presbyterian Primary School. Mm. The, the street used to be called Station Road, where we young people. And now they have changed it to Kwame Nkrumah Avenue. Mm, it runs okay. from Accra okay. all the way yeah. to Circle. Now, our school is just positioned somewhere by the roadside. It's an old school, Presbyterian school. And uh, one day in the afternoon, as small boys, you know, we saw a crowd coming from Accra. And most of the people were on bicycles. And I, I was told in those days, the middle class rode bicycles. Oh, OK. Yeah, you, you can imagine. <laughs> and then um, they came and stopped right in front of our school. So we were all sort of surprised. We were watching them, you know, the young kids. And we saw that they moved across to a story building right opposite our street, our school. And we didn't know one of Nkrumah's lieutenants was the trusted mm. lieutenant. Mm. Uh, Kobla Agbele Bedema. Bedema. Mm -hmm. Bedema was staying. That was Bedema's house. So when they got him out of James Ford prison, they brought him straight to Bedema's house first. Before they moved him to his house at uh, what we now call Accra New Town. In those days, they called it Lagos Town. Mm. You know? So we had the opportunity to have a look at Kwame oh. for the first time in my life. After, right after jail? After jail. We piled down on him and all sort of, you know. Wow. <laughs> and um, among the people, there was my late granduncle called J.K.A. Tamaklu, 
a fanatic of Kwame Nkrumah, CPP. No. He died recently. Now, so that's where I go to see Nkrumah at mm. close range. Mm. And interestingly, the prison that he was, I have slept there too in my political history. Wow. Oh, yeah. Just the same cell? No, the same cell. But the prison, yeah. yeah. He was put in one particular cell, but we were in a hall. Mm. There's a hall there and there are cells. You follow me? Mm -hmm. We were in the mm -hmm. hall. But I asked about where he slept and I was shown. Wow. Yeah. Now, so, and I remember very well to adjacent to our school was a politician by the name Brimer from the north. And I mention his name because these are people whom I think we should learn something from. Just like one of our chiefs, our missions, they did it recently. Brahman was a minister, I think, of communication in those days, in the early part of Nkuma's reign. Now, when he was paid, can you believe he said the money was too much? He said the money was too much, too much. for his pay. And he believed that there had been a mistake. So he sent the money back. Can it happen today? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No matter how much they pay you, it's too small. He sent the back. He sent because they, they are paid, they have overpaid him. He felt he felt there had been a mistake in the Oh my goodness! It will never happen. It will never ever happen again. And they told him no. They have not been mistake yet. He said the money was too much. This can never happen now. Mm -mm. Somebody mm -mm. who did a similar thing recently. Was Tobi Afede. Yes. I'm sure you know about Yes, it. about the S. Gracia. S. Gracia. You see, these are the type of people you can call leaders. And what really attracted me, but let me come to the whole UP tradition. What attracted me to the UP more was the fact that the leadership then was selfless mm. Mm. and they had integrity. Mm. Who were the leaders then? The leadership at that time, people like Aram Bozan, mm. at least those I came to meet. When I was a kid, we had numerous political parties. Mm -hmm. Numerous. Muslim Council, uh, Anglo Youth, uh, what do you call it? Togolan Congress, Ashanti Youth, uh, different, different, all sort of things. And Kuma decided that he wants one opposition party so that the, part, so that the country can progress. So the opposition was advised, I think, it was the Anela or whatever it was, it was done in Parliament, and they were able to come out with a policy that all opposition groupings should be one, mm -hmm. so that they can stand against Kwame and his party. Mm -hmm. And that was what brought the formation of the United Party. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about how the leadership then was so different that you liked because they were selfless people? Selfless people, names that I can remember. Those when I was a kid, as they do. Mm. Mm. As I talk to you now, I want anybody to tell me that this is Domo's property. J.H. Mensa. I am 100% sure he has no property. I know what I'm talking about. Aram Bonza, I don't know of any property. That Rocha had a little house somewhere here. Even that he built not quite long after that he died. A little, it's a hamlet, if I use the right word. These were leaders you can follow. Their interest was the nation Ghana. And Nkuma showed that clearly right from the word go. Before independence, the whites virtually left us with nothing. And after independence, we had nothing. The only thing they did was to build a harbor at uh, Takradi, put up a rail, a rail road, so that they can get access to the out of the country. Mm. Then build a hospital at Kolebu for the natives. They had their own hospital. Most of you don't know. We had what we call in Accra here, 
European hospital. Now Which was separate from the native hospital? Absolutely. So Kolebu was a native hospital? The native hospital was Kolebu. Uh, Kolebu? Yes. And the European hospital was? The European hospital is what now you call Ridge Hospital. Oh. Or Greater Accra Hospital. And it was a European hospital indeed. For only the, Europeans? Absolutely. Now, if you, if you watch carefully, The, the, the geography of a certain part of Accra, coming from a certain part of Adabraka, coming from Accra. You might have heard of a, a hotel by the name Avenida Hotel. Avenida, yes. Now, Avenida Hotel, the long street that runs from Accra all the way and comes down towards uh, what we have now as. Uh, an overhead somewhere there. That street used to be called Boundary Road. And that was the boundary between the natives and the whites. I see. Kwame Goma changed the name to Kojo Thompson Road. Okay. It was formerly Boundary Road. Boundary Road. You can make a search on that. And why is it a Boundary Road? The natives were all at the other on side. side. And from that boundary road, you come up where they have the National Archives now. Mm -hmm. It used to be a park, mm -hmm. huge park. The Catholic Cathedral came there recently when I was a kid. The Americans came to build it. The whole of that place was an empty land. The next major thing that you face or object that you see is a psychiatric place. Hospital, yeah. And that was built in uh, 1907. Then from there, all the bungalows you see are for white. The ridge, that's the whole of ridge, as ridge goes. So but basically, ridge was like the European quarters. It is European. They had their own post office. They had their own police station. Whoa. Their police station is what in Kuma used as an African... You see, you know the runabout. The circle there. The circle. It was a, po a police station. It was a police post for the whites. Rich police post. Wow. And believe me, I was told this one, I was really told this one, that if you don't work there, you don't go there. Hmm. That was a native. A native seen there after a particular time, you'll be questioned. Like we had in South Africa. Wow. But so we had a really apartheid absolutely. system. Absolutely. That, that, that has always been the objective Whoa. of the English. I was told what saved us was the mosquito. The mosquito killed a number of them. And as a result of that, they couldn't stay. They couldn't settle here. Unlike Kenya, where they had a very good weather. And indeed, some of them, some of them attempted to go on the hills. Like, uh, uh, what do you call Aquapi Mampong Hills, and some of these hills in Kwawu area. Well, they wanted to stay. But the mosquitoes really wow. are outside there. So you can see that they had the same plan like they the had. The same apartheid system was put in place. System. When in European quarters and Absolutely. the natives. Absolutely. Whoa. Absolutely. Absolutely. The same thing. We were just, and we were also lucky. Politically, we were a bit ahead of the other African mm -hmm. countries. The agitation started quite early. And when Nkrumah came in, he put a lot of fire into it. Mm. And they had no other alternative. After the 28th, uh, cross uh, Meda. 20th, 23rd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the Christian two, Borg exactly, shooting. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What happened was that uh, they had to give him. Mm. And that was what compelled them to give a wow. self-government and then later. I'm surprised you didn't sway towards the Nkrumah tradition, the, U, the CPP and the veranda. How did you sway them to the UP tradition? I, I remember, this, we asked questions that uh, are quite interesting. When I was in detention with Kwesiyama, I'm sure you might have heard it. Yes. <laughs> You know, Kusiyama was one of the closest associates of Kwame. Yes. 
by then, those of us in detention, that imprisonment that I can remember well, Kwame Pienim was serving in prison. And so on. <laughs> uh, was there. And some top lawyers and top politicians. And before then, I have been head of Accra House of Fuku. I was chairman of the club. I came, brought oh, the so-called revolution. So you have been with us. <laughs> never said that for ages. <laughs> and brought the change there, sacked 23 regular players, and brought in the young ones, including Shamukwe, Abladekuma, and these boys. Not quite long after that, I ended up in Inswama with a case that was put on me for nothing because later they had to release Doc, this is getting very very interesting let me take a quick commercial break okay. when we come back we'll take it from there folks i'm i'm back in school i don't know about you we're taking a short commercial break when we come back more of history lessons with dr Nyahu Tamaklu. we'll be right back ASM show. Is it the luxurious rooms? Or the serene green surroundings? Is it the tempting swimming pool? the classy conference room or the cute gift shop maybe it's our chef's array of cooking delights whichever way it's all about cactus creek a most respected hotel. 0556039507 Hi my name is Angela Metal, a massage therapist at Cactus Creek. My job is simply to pamper you with the three hours, to relax you, to revitalize you, and to rejuvenate you. Come and let me pamper you. 055 -039 -5007. Most of you are loving my jacket. Mr. Sao, I am rough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The jacket is provided by Asepa Essentials. So if you want some, this is the number to call. 0247-661983. So call as a pa and get yourself a pretty decent jacket. SM show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are back and we are in school today. We are all learning. I told my cameramen who are much, much younger than I should know this, old, but even <laughs> I am learning how much more, how much less them. Anyway, we are back. Doc, this is so exciting. Yeah. So we, let's take it from when you went to prison. Yeah, the prison. And I went how prison. You, you were in prison around that time, Doc. Exactly. It's quite, it was quite interesting. Um, there was a gentleman, a senior army officer, 
by name. It's important I mention the name because uh, uh, we, are, we are talking about history. Mm -hmm. right called um, Kenneth C.D. Benny. C.D. Benny asked permission from the, during the time of Jerry John Rollins. You know, I went to prison twice. Mm. My, the first first, time was my first time was Kutua Champo. After that, I knew I had done wrong, and if I had been killed, I wouldn't mind. Yeah, we'll get to that because I know they arrested you for attempting a coup or something. That's right. We'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then the second one was with C.D. Benny, not about a coup. That one had nothing to mm -hmm. do with the coup d'etat. Mm -hmm. And um, myself and C.D. Benny had a permit to go to Lome and bring down a gentleman, a German gentleman, down to Accra. So I went with him. We brought the gentleman. He had a pass. Anywhere we go at the roadblock, you know, we read the pass and then they allowed it. I was a few days after we arrived. I was arrested, CD was arrested, and I know that one very senior lawyer. Yeah. Yeah, we just all I knew I was first sent to airport police station cells. Mm -hmm. Then from the street. To James Ford, Kwame Nkrumah's house. <laughs> In those days, they had these so called tribunals. You mm -hmm. might have heard of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You must always be guilty. You must be guilty. Oh, you must be guilty. So we're surprised we were sent to the tribunal like uh, this within a short time we've been thrown to, to prison. I had five years slap on me. Benny had the same five years. Well, what charges? That the charges are what till today, I don't know. But I will tell you what God did. Now, the charges they came out with later, which I had nothing and knew nothing about that. There was a business going on with this German. And he was being cheated. I am not a business. I've never been in business. I don't know about Benny. I don't know about the lawyer. But we're training. Not By then I have served about three years. When we got in there, Kwame Pien was already there. He mm. served about nine years already in prison. Mm. And Kwame was in prison because he was defending the country. I want you to get that straight. Not because of any criminal act. Because defending the country? Defending the country. In our constitution, that is allowed. That any group of people who take power from the government, the civilian government, you have every right to challenge them. If you can fight them, fight them. It is there. Mm. I think you follow me. If, if, if any group of people yeah. who are not happy we are not with happy the civilian government? With, uh, no. By f will forcefully take power mm -hmm. from the civilian government. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's even now our national anthem. We have to fight them with the our blood. Rule. Yeah. Exactly. So in short, that was what sent Kwame to prison. He was even lucky he wasn't killed. Now, we met Kwame. I always call him senior prefect. He was there already. And he was so helpful. Kwame was so helpful. In prison attire, you know, just so helpful. So we, we became quite happy, the three of us, you know. And so we started the prison life. Then one day Kwame told me, Kwame said, you, know, ah, you are a doctor. You work with the military, you work outside the country for years. We have a nice prison hospital. There's no doctor there. Why don't you practice here to help the inmates and some of us? Mm. By then, mm -hmm. inmates, uh, prisoners were dying one after the other. Mm. I, I told Kwame, I said, look, do you give me a way to think about my sentence. You <laughs> were for six years? I, I was to be there for six years. Was, okay, okay. And he was suggesting, while you are there, why don't you exactly. work and take care of the prisoners? 
and I, I jokingly said, look, look, come and leave me, leave me to, to cut my sentence. We are thinking about this is my six years <laughs> ahead of me. So he laughed. And Kwame is somebody who is very consistent and persistent. Yeah. And then he came back another time and said, look, I've already arranged for the Catholics to come and renovate it. There's a complete hospital there in, in, in Sawan. Wow. You'll be a journalist if you go there, maybe they will let you see. No doctor. There's even a dental chair there. Really? Oh, yes. At the Zoom? At the Zoom prisons. The Zoom was well built. So, Kwame came and said, he has a ring with the Catholic, because the Catholics used to come there mm -hmm. to pray, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have agreed to come and renovate the whole place. And they did. Nicely. Finished areas that mm. had to be finished mm. and and lo and behold, I started practice there. <laughs> so that's why you started a practice. <laughs> wow, show some love, man. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I became a, a, what you, a regular medical officer for the, for, the, for the image. For the image. And not just the image, the officers. Wow. The officers and their children. And there was one lady who had a case also at the female section who luckily was a nursing sister. So he joined me, he joined me every, every morning and then we look after the patient. So you're working every day? As it, a, it was a daily affair. I'm within the prison. I'm mm -hmm, not getting out of mm -hmm, the prison. But mm -hmm. she, she, she was she always was brought in to, yeah. from the female section yeah. to the male section to assist. So she made the work very easier. So I was there when one day, believe it or not, people started agitating in Accra. There was this journalist, I always forget, but I'll get the name. He used to be editor of the Times during the time of Rawlings. I'm forgetting the name, but I'm sure I'll get it. He wrote a strong article that why should three prominent Ghanaians be kept because of one white man? The people started agitating, which was quite unusual during Rawlings' time. Then within a short time, they brought the white man into Sawan. By then, I was playing tennis with Kwame. When we say tennis, just something to exercise your mm -hmm, limbs. Mm -hmm. And then when the man appeared, he has been brought the previous evening, the previous night. Kwame brought him to the, the, what I would call the tennis court. And I left Kwame and the man there. Kwame said, you know what? I said, no, no, no. I don't think I can play tennis with, with such a person. Man. Yeah. So I don't know what I have done to him. Did he remember you? He knew of course. That. He knows me. He knows the lawyer too. He knows Benny very well too. So I left. And then we were there one day when all of a sudden they said we should be released. By then, I've already served three years of my life wow. in prison. So they came just like that. The way they bring you, the same when they want you out hurriedly. So it was very unexpected. They unexpected. just came and told you unexpected. that? Unexpected. We have not finished serving the full term. Unexpected. So that will tell you. But look at what happened after that. After that. I came have my own quiet life. Then there's a gentleman. He's alive. I'll mention his name. He's now a member of the Council of State called Stanley Ajiri Blankson. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know him. Mm -hmm. He came to me and said I should help him to go and see somebody. And I went along with him. We went to where they now call immigration headquarters. But I didn't even know that it was an immigration office. I remember very well, we went to the second floor. Mm. He knocked on the door. The door was open. We entered. A gentleman got out from his seat, a very short person like that. And then when he saw me, I couldn't even re recognize him immediately. Then he said, oh, doctor, now that I have seen you, I can sleep. So I was surprised. Then he said, I am IGP CO Lamte. 
He died recently. He said, we wrongly sent you to Kiyo. Nigeria is alive. You can ask him. I just look at him like this. Wow. I could have been killed because mm -hmm. in those days, killing was just mm -hmm. the norm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I could have been killed. In those days, killing was a normal thing. So you can see. So as I was saying, I'm coming back to Kweseyama's issue. Mm -hmm. So as of all came, a whole bus of Accra household, the whole of his someone town heard about it, that they were coming to play against Prison 11. <laughs> Prison 11? Versus Accra household. No. <laughs> <laughs> Kwame was there in charge of the Prison 11 team. <laughs> Kwame oh, wow. So they came in, and believe it or not, my small boys that I brought into the club, Shamu, Kuya, Bladekuma, Dubate, Anjete, so what, who are now big men, they all came. And we're watching them. They have developed so wonderfully. Now the, pre, the, 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 the people in someone and this environment, they heard about it, and they came to the gate, knocking the gate so that they should be open. They never opened them. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you can't allow the, the civilians just to enter, come into the right. air. Now, when we finish with the football, so I have to address them, the boys, to encourage them. And there were, a lot of people came, other inmates came to listen to what I was saying, including Kwesiyama. So Kwame Pienim brought me a stool. Kwame Pienim is alive, you can't see me. He brought me a stool, I stood on the stool, and I can see them, you know, tall. After talking to them, then Kusiyama said, hey, doctor, you are an old Kokpanga. Old oh. Kokpanga. I learned it was a term used by Kwame Ngroma. Kokpanga. Old since maybe the one. Yeah. To be more than 80 or 90 going. They, they should remember this. He said, when Ngroma sees a young man who is so sharp politically, he said, and the whole Kupanga, then he put his finger like this to you. Mm. <laughs> so I said, Kwesi, what is the meaning of whole Kupanga? He said, that is exactly the word used by Kwame. Then he asked me the question, but where were you during Kwame's days? I mm -hmm. said, I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and then he showed he was impressed about the way I addressed the people. Yeah. And we became so close, you mm. know. Mm. Unfortunately, he, he's passed on now. So, you know, that was my life in, in someone. Mm. Yeah. But as I said, my first experience with imprisonment started when I was in the battalion. When I was commissioned as an officer, my mother unit is a military hospital. Uh, when I got in the, within a short time, I was attached to a recruitment team. <clears throat> and the recruitment team was headed by Lieutenant Colonel, um, let me get the name. Later, he became the commander of 2BN. Uh, Ufusuapia. Mm. Not Larry. Not Larry. Okay. Not Larry. There's a different Ufusuapia. Now, we visited all the regional capitals. By then, we had nine regions. We visited all the regional capitals in the country. We ended up at Bolga. But then virtually there was nothing in Bolga. I'm talking about 1974. So, we recruited soldiers. And then you know the reason why we went to all the regional capitals? Just to make sure we get people from their own places. Mm, to the army. To the army. So that it's representative of every... Absolutely. Absolutely. At that time. But it didn't happen that way. We got all the people ready. We have finished with our duties. They have been sent to training. Then... 
when Rawlings had his abortive coup. The May 13th one? The May, May 15th, May I think. May 15th, yeah. I was then in detention myself and four, three other officers who were all soldiers about a tentative coup d'etat on Kutua Champo. So we were thrown in into, into Oshafford. We were just there. That was where I had the opportunity to meet for the first time in my life, Pauli. Mm, he mm. was brought in there. Mm. That's a quick rewind. Did you actually attempt to overthrow? Oh, we did. You, you did? Oh. If I say with you, I'm telling like we did. We were four officers. Three captains, including myself, Captain Aye, Captain Totime, Captain Nyahu Nyahu Tamakwe. And our leader was Colonel George Minyela. Minyela was the leader? Oh, of course, he was a senior officer. And he's been in a champion government before, don't yes. forget. <laughs> he was the one who changed Kufrodwa, George. Wow. Yeah, but the reason why I personally got convinced by George was we just say, the, the people are fed up with the military. And he is being in government. And if we succeed, they will quickly organize for an election to be held. Mm. So that we get a So he wanted to stage a coup, overthrow coup two, exactly. and then organize for exactly. civilians to exactly. elect. And we were, we were betrayed by somebody. Who was a soldier too? He was in the group. He, he he was brought in, and he went and reported to the military intelligence. Mm, that you guys were plotting a coup. Yes, exactly, but he was encouraged to still attend meetings with us. Mm. So the government knew even about how D Day. <laughs> wow. So the D Day, the night before the D Day, we were arrested. Oh, the night before. Oh yeah. Yeah. How was the arrest? You they just oh, it was your house. I remember I was I come home to a crowd and and then a car drives drove into the house and they, they gently asked an officer the, the person came and greeted me and said they are wanted by the military intelligence. So I entered there. It was one of these PJO cars, five four four. Mm, five four four back in the day. <laughs> that was the, yeah. the car like yeah. you had this uh, <laughs> lamp horses around. That was the, the popular <laughs> car at that time, you know. So I was taking my first stop was at um, at um, uh, in those days it was called special branch, special mm -hmm. branch cells. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are facing, if you are from thirty seven traffic light and you are heading towards Kaukudi, look on your right, you see the very high wall. Mm. Yeah, 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 behind yeah. the wall, that was a special early, branch. Yeah, it's still there. I think it's still there. Yeah. And that, that's, a lot takes place there. That's where I was sent. Get everything out of you. We follow your pants left. Where you sleep is where you do everything. Where you sleep? You have you a separate no, 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 place no. to go. No, 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 ev no, no. Everything, everything is done there. Bathroom, going to I the... I say everything. So you can imagine. For three for months without sunlight. We never came out for three months. By the time we saw some lights, we were all pale like a, like a paper, a mm. white paper. Mm. Did and you even, eat? Did they give you food? You can imagine. In those days, too, there was hunger in the country. Yeah. Hunger, real hunger. That was when we started using yellow corn from the U.S. Yes, I remember. <laughs> wow. So you can see what even a detainee will get. Mm-hmm. You follow me? Now, then one day we were there, a vehicle came, they said we should get in. We thought we were even going to be released, because we've been there for some time, there have been no trial. We thought we were going to be released. Vehicle came, we were just pushing, and the vehicle started moving northwards. So I was saying, where are these boats taking us? Mm. Are they taking us to Kumasi, Tamale? Or why? Why was where I wouldn't like to go at all because I was it was quite a very bad prison. Mm. And the vehicle drove straight 
to the Sawan prisons. We stayed in Sawan for two weeks. And then they brought us to Oshafort. That was where we stayed over a year plus. A year. Until Kutu was removed. Over, over one year. Wow. Until Kutu was removed by this great officer. Uh, Kufu. Yeah. No, uh, that was the SMC. Yeah, it was Akufu. Akufu, Akufu yeah. FWK Akufu. Yes. Uh, you know, FWK Akufu. Gentleman's gentleman. And, uh, and the, even when he was, re he removed, when he released us, it took some time. When they, when the order was, when they, when they took over from Kutu, they didn't immediately release it. They, they set free Pawili, Badema, and some others. But before then, when we went in, we met J.H. Mensa and Sheikh Isaac Kui. They had nothing to do with the coup d'etat. Their case was, I think, um, about um, an article written mm. uh, against, against mm. Asha, I forgot mm. the So, and that was when, where I got close, particularly to J.H. Mensa. Mm. Yeah. So that was that. Um, one day we were there, and they came. In the prison, when you hear inside, and then something unusual has happened. Inside? Inside. They will shout, the warders will shout inside. If it's not time to go in to sleep, and the time yeah. to go into sleep is around five. So when they say inside That's before then, then, and normally we have been there for some time, so the officers got to know us. So at times they allow us, you know, about an hour or two to stay on the compound before we go to our room. When they say inside, something unusual has happened. And that particular day, yes, indeed, something unusual happened. And they open the gates, they have three gates. No, to, to, to get into the inner part mm -hmm. of the prison, you have to pass through three through gates. Three gates, yeah. And uh, who came in? By then, acting director general of prison called Agbo. He came walking straight to the director's office. And when then, when they called the uh, the four of us, and then they gave directed, they showed us the paper. The government has directed that we should be released immediately. And we said, oh, yeah, we, we have been released. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we said, oh, it's over 7 o'clock now. I said, no, 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 you have to leave. You can go and come and collect your items tomorrow. You have to leave. <laughs> he said, by order, you have, we must leave. We were afraid that maybe it was a setup or something. No, 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 no. No, no. okay. Uh, that would be good. They showed us a letter signed okay. by the head of state, you know. So we were released. We went to our respective homes, and then the following day we came and called. I, went, I remember I went to collect my, my wristwatch and one or two things, you know. Some of the clothing are almost mm -hmm. in tatters, you know. So that was my prison section. Now the boys that I recruited, or we recruited into the armed forces, when Rollins came to power in 1979, And then I've been released. I was leading my normal life. I, was, I remember I was driving from. You were still in the army. No, no, I've never, I, I, I have been dismissed from the army. Dismissed, okay. The okay. four of us were dismissed okay. from the army. In fact, okay. they brought the documents to us at Osha Fort. Okay, to, to, to dismiss. To okay, all right, I get it now. So I was just driving as a civilian. Now, if you are going to the from 37 Junction, traffic light junction, you are heading towards Bemakam. You see that there is what we call an army mess, just on the right side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, they have recently, uh, what do you, um, they have uh, nicely renovated a, the church which used to be there. It's by the roadside. It's a Catholic church. So I stopped there to talk to somebody. And the person had left, and I was just about to enter my car. Then I saw a Prince Goa. You know a Prince Goa? That vehicle that was commonly used by the soldiers in those days, especially during 79, mm -hmm. it carries normally either few junior officers or other ranks. So I realized the vehicle came straight in, stood right by my car. Then this young man, average age about 22, can't be more than that. They came out briskly 
and they all. Good afternoon, sir. I said, I was looking at them. I didn't know any of them. Mm -hmm. They said, sir, you were among the officers who passed into the armed forces. And I was the doctor in charge of that particular recruitment team. <laughs> he was a, and we saw you, we recognized you and said, we are coming to play our compliments to you. Wow. The five of them were all members of the council. They were? They were members of the council. Where Jerry was the chairman. The only boy I can remember whose name never forget me is called Sheikh Tete. I even when I see him, I, I can't recognize him. So that was another phase of my life that was interesting. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, all of them. How could that happen? Mm -hmm. It happened. Mm -hmm. Five of them. Five? All of them on the council. The, by then, the council was made up of the majority of those really in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in control. The other ranks took over. And they were in control. Mm -hmm. so they, mm -hmm. they had their number, highest mm -hmm. number mm -hmm. on the council, headed by Rawlings. With Bwachejan, mm -hmm. you know, the deputy, mm -hmm. and Bab Chamfo and the other people. You follow me? And you had recruited all of them? Yeah. Yeah. But even that particular coup, there's something about it a lot of people didn't know. That's the so called revolution or the uprising. I call it a general ranks uprising. Mm -hmm. When I was in one battalion of infantry, from, from 37 I was sent to one battalion. All the battalions have got hospitals. So they should all have doctors. Any battalion should have a doctor. doctor. So I was sent to one battalion of infantry as a doctor. And a very close friend of mine, whose bungalow was next to mine, was called Captain Henry Smith. Mm. I'm sure you might have heard mm -hmm. this. His Juno brother is the one in the NDC. And I always uh, Victor. Victor. That's Victor's senior brother. We were very close. We would go out together, you know, in those days, young men, you know, we were over the town. We would drive all the way from. We drove all the way from Tema to, uh, what do you call it, KTK and all these places. Wow. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the Henry was then in charge of the armory, the whole armory of Ghana. You understand me? Mm -hmm. Which is based at Michel Camp. In fact, because it's so dangerous, it's, it's, not, with, it's not within the camp itself. It's outside the camp. Uh, they have demonstrated, they have made the area so beautiful. You see, you know that is a military uh, property. So Henry was the one in charge. Now, when the uprising came, the work to get the whole thing going was done by Henry. Henry? Yeah. Not only at that time, they had a group. If I had not been arrested earlier, definitely I would have been part of that group. But it was my close friend. Very, very close. Wow. Do I remember when they came and I, I had then been released? He met me and said, you know, you went too fast. <laughs> <laughs> you went too because, fast. Because you see, the yeah. idea was that people got fed up with the military. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just like even the civilian government. When people get fed up with it, they want any means to get it out of power. People got fed up, if you follow me. But myself, George Minila, and my other colleagues, maybe we were faster as Henry put it. But they were planning also. So I think when we were arrested, they calmed down a bit. Mm -hmm. Until finally, when Akufu came on, they decided that was the right time to move. You follow me? So Henry is somebody history should not forget. Mm. But he left the army as a major. Mm -hmm. And when, during their time, 
During that time, he was in charge of um, the foreign ministry. He was in charge of the foreign ministry. Very interesting. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that, on that note, we have to end the first half of this very, very, very interesting historical account. But stay tuned because that was then. <laughs> when we come back in our next episode, we're going to talk about now. We have talked about then. Let's now come to now and look at what the situation is now from the eyes of Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tawaklu. I could have put my head on the block for Nanando when it comes to honesty at that time. And Nanando knew and he knows that one of the biggest problems facing this country is dishonesty, which you people call, what the word you used? Um, corruption. 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 Uh, the person we have now in the Flagstaff House is not the Nanando that I know. I'm being frank with you. If you are working with the head of state, hmm? you are his vice. If it does something that you disagree, I believe what you do is take your pen and paper and resign. You, you must have that culture. You don't think about, oh, if I resign, people will be thinking, oh, why should I do that? What am I going to eat? Blah, 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 blah. No, such people cannot lead the nation. Mm. And they should never get close to power. Mm. People with that culture of resignation should never get close to power. The KSM Show. Folks, so until we see you again, KSM having to sign up this one in the same words as I always do, and that is, I am out of here. <laughs>